everyone. I'm Melissa Prophet, the Education and Communication Specialist for the Warren County Soil and Water Conservation District. And today we are going to talk about another hardworking, amazing animal from Ohio. Now if you look at my little friend here, you might be able to guess who we're talking about today. Because there's only one animal that's famous for its big paddle tail and its large buck teeth. That's right, today we are going to talk about the American beaver. Now, the American beaver is the second largest rodent in the entire world, and the largest rodent here in North America. So, what's a rodent? Let's think about those big teeth that the beaver has, because that is a characteristic of the rodent family. Think about other animals with big teeth. You've got mice, squirrels. These are animals that are gonna use their teeth for chewing. In fact, if we look at a beaver's teeth, not only are they large, but you might notice they're orange in color. This orange color is actually a strong enamel that coats the teeth to allow them to chew on very strong substances such as wood. Here's a branch that has been chewed through by a beaver. So you can see the teeth marks there. Now, Beavers are going to chew on wood for a couple of different reasons. One, it's actually a food source for them. Second, they build their homes out of branches. Now, when you're chewing through something like wood, you'd be in trouble if your teeth broke and then you didn't have it anymore. So their teeth grow differently than ours as well. For us, we have young baby teeth that as we get older, we lose, they fall out, and then we have an adult tooth. But if we lose that adult tooth, there's not a backup. Rodent teeth, however, continue to grow forever so that as they are broken and filed down, the beaver can keep accessing that food source and an ability to build its home. Now the lodge of the beaver is pretty cool. It's made out of sticks. And if you see a lodge in the wild, well, it might just look like a pile of sticks on a pond. But if we were able to peek inside this lodge, we would see that it has rooms or living spaces, and even an entrance that goes under the water. Now the reason the entrance goes underwater is to protect the beaver and its family from predators, because an entire family of beavers might live in one lodge. When you live out on the water though, you have to be very good at swimming. So the beaver has several body parts that help them to be good in the water. One of those body parts is that famous paddle tail. Not only can they use their tail to help them steer in the water, like the rudder on a boat, but they can even communicate with this big tail by slapping it on the water. A mother might call her kits, what we call our babies, into the lodge, or maybe another beaver sees danger and it's gonna signal that danger by slapping its tail. But it isn't only the tail of the beaver that helps it to swim. Beavers also have webbed back feet. If you look at this kit here, you can see that webbing or stretched skin between its toes. Let's think about other animals we know with webbed feet. Think about ducks and frogs. All of these animals swim. That's what they have in common. And this webbing allows them to move more easily through the water. Now, if any of you are swimmers at home, maybe you've jumped into the water before and oh, gotten water up the nose or maybe water in the ears. When you're an animal constantly getting in and out of the water, you don't want that to happen. So beavers have skin flaps that will automatically close their nostrils and close their ears to prevent water from getting in. But let's think about their eyes. When you're swimming in a pond, there might be sticks or leaves in there that could poke you, but you need to see where you're going, right? Well, we have a body part that helps protect our eyes. It's our eyelids, right? But do me a favor and let's close our eyelids. And when we close our eyes tight, can you see anything? No, we can't. So we wouldn't know where we were going. So beavers have a third eyelid that is clear. So when it goes around their eyes, well, it protects it, kind of like a goggle would protect it. But because it's translucent, you can see through it, they still know where they're going. Now, when we think about beavers swimming here in Ohio, they swim 
all year round. They do not hibernate like some other animals we might think about, like groundhogs. A beaver is going to swim even in cold winter water. And the way that they do that is not only do they have a nice protective fur coat, but they can put air underneath that fur to help give a layer of insulation, right? That keeps them extra warm even in the winter. Now that fur coat they have is a nice brown color to help them camouflage or blend in to the trees and branches and sticks that make up most of their world. Beavers are nature's best engineers and they really help the environment where they live. Let's take a look again at that picture of the lodge. If we look past the lodge, you can see these rows of sticks called dams. Now when beavers put branches across the water to form these dams, what happens is it slows moving water down, creates pools behind the dam where the beaver can build that lodge to safely live. But as that water spills out of its banks and it's slowed down, it also creates wetland habitats. And wetland habitats are vitally important to other animals, say our amphibian friends, like our frogs and toads and salamanders. They need the wetland as part of their life cycle to lay their eggs. But wetlands also nature's best filtration or cleaning system. Many plants that grow in wetlands help to absorb pollutants out of the environment and out of our water supply. So not only is the beaver helping itself and its family, but it's helping other animals in the environment with it, humans included. So there's a lot of nice information about beavers. In fact, when beavers are swimming in the water, they don't get heavy with their fur because they even have an oil gland at the base of their tail, that big paddle tail, that they can use their mouths to distribute that oil all over their fur coats and it essentially makes them kind of like waterproof. It's like putting a raincoat on over their fur coat. So these physical adaptations, these behavioral adaptations, the way the beaver survives in the environment really helps to put the large picture together. This animal is truly one of nature's best engineers and hardest workers. But can you guys help me review all of these awesome things about the beaver? Let's do that by building our own beaver and playing a little dress up. Okay, so now that we've learned about the different physical or body adaptations of the beaver that let it live where it lives, well, let's build a beaver by dressing up like one. I've got some different items here that represent the different body parts of the beaver that help it live where it lives. For instance, Remember those webbed back feet that help it to swim? Well, that's kind of like flippers that humans can wear. So little beaver, can you put your foot? There we go, now we have a nice webbed foot. Now we talked about how beavers sometimes swim in very cold water, and they can do that because they put air under their fur like insulation. So little beaver, can you put your arms out to the side like that? Perfect, because we are going to wrap you in insulation to keep you nice and warm. So there is your air, but we have to put the fur over it as well. So remember our beaver fur was brown to help it blend into the sticks and branches of the trees where it lives. So let's go ahead and put your brown fur on you beaver. Is that nice and comfortable? Yes. All right. Now let's think about what else could help our beaver friend to be able to swim in that water wetland environment. For one, we don't want water to get in your ears or up your nose, do we? So we need to remember that beavers have nose flaps and ear flaps that help them to keep the water out of those ears. How does that feel? Good. Excellent. We also don't want water getting in our eyes. So beavers have that third clear eyelid that help them to be able to see, but still protects their eyes. So we're gonna give you a pair of goggles right there. Can you see little beaver? Yes. Oh, excellent. Now a couple more things that the beaver needs. Remember, it doesn't want its fur to get heavy. So it needs to put on a little bit of oil from the base of its tail all over its fur. But we need a tail, don't we? Yes. Well, let's not forget that the beaver has a large flat paddle tail 
kind of like the paddle for a canoe. That paddle tail not only helps it swim, but they can even communicate by slapping their big heavy tail against the water. So your tail is so heavy, little beaver, that we're gonna set it behind you just like that. Now it looks like you'd been a, be pretty good at swimming, but how are you going to eat and cut down branches? We're missing one major body part, and that is those big orange teeth. So let's put your orange teeth on here. Now your teeth are so big that they're not going to go into your mouth. Rather, we are going to hook them on right under your chin like this. What do you think, Beaver? How do you feel? Good. Do you feel like a little beaver? Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, our beaver friend has lots of different ways that it can live and survive in that wet wetland habitat. Thank you so much for all your help, little beaver.